In this video, I take some backstrap from a recent harvest and I stuff it, I wrap it in bacon, and then I smoke it. It turns out amazing and this is definitely a recipe you'll want to try. My name is Matt and I live for moments like these. Guys, I killed the biggest buck of my life this morning. I'm far from an expert, but using persistence and a little bit of luck, I'll be able to make some pretty cool things happen. I do my best to capture the entire harvest, the kill, the prep, and my favorite part, the meal. Because to me, it's more than a hunt. It's man versus deer. He is a mass monster, holy cow. Welcome back to the channel, guys. If you're new to the channel, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to check out a man versus deer video. I post a lot of hunting videos. I got some cooking videos in here, but most of what I do is catch clean cook style hunting videos. If that sounds like something you're interested, go ahead and smack that subscribe button and hit that notifications bell. Like I said earlier, guys, in this video, I'm taking some backstrap from a deer I harvested this year, and we're gonna stuff it with some jalapenos and some cream cheese, and then we're gonna wrap it in bacon, and we're gonna smoke it. If you wanna check out the hunt for the deer that we're cooking in this video, I'm gonna link that both in the description, and it'll show up at the end of this video. Super exciting hunt, really big buck. Definitely check it out. But with that being said, Let's get into this video. I'm going to show you how to make this stuffed, wrapped, and smoked venison backstrap. All right, guys, to start this process, we're going to take a little bit of water and we're going to rinse our backstrap off. It did set in the fridge for a day or so. It does have some blood, some excess moisture. So we're going to rinse any of that nasty stuff off and give us a nice clean surface to start from. Once we have that done, we're going to take a couple of paper towels and pat our meat dry. This is gonna ensure that any excess moisture and blood is removed, and it's also gonna make sure that when we apply a seasoning later, it doesn't try to disintegrate from excess moisture. What we're left with after that is a nice, clean looking piece of wild game meat. It just doesn't get a whole lot better than that. Now we're going to set our meat aside for just a second and we're going to focus on the stuffing. This is the good part. We're going to base our stuffing. We're going to start it with a block of cream cheese. We're going to let that get to room temperature. And while it's doing that, we're going to dice up a jalapeno. Remove the core, scrape out the seeds, slice it up real thin, dice it up, add it to our cream cheese. And then we're going to repeat that with the other side of the jalapeno. We're going to add some parsley. We're going to add a little bit of onion powder. And then we're gonna add some Kinder's salt, pepper, and garlic. If you haven't tried this seasoning, it's pretty amazing on any kind of red meat. Once all of that good stuff is in there, we're gonna stir it up to where everything is evenly distributed through our mixture, and we're gonna set it aside. Next thing we're gonna do is make an incision that our stuffing can go into. Very, very similar to butterflying a piece of meat. You want to slice most of the way through it, not all the way through it. You want to stay about an inch away from either end. It's going to create a really good deep pocket uh, that will hold a lot of that good stuffing we just made. Once we get that down, we're going to repeat it for the other side. And then we're going to season the inside and the outside lightly with more of that good, good Kinder seasoning. Now this is the part you guys have all been waiting for. We are about to wrap this thing in bacon. We're gonna set our bacon down with enough strips to cover this back strap entirely, and we're going to have them overlap each other just ever so slightly. We get our bacon laid down, back strap goes in the middle face up, we're gonna stuff it as full as we can, we're gonna close it the best we can, and then we're gonna start wrapping that bacon around, starting from the opposite side we started from. The way that we laid it out, each piece of bacon is gonna hold the next piece of bacon shut. It's gonna keep the whole thing from unraveling. It's gonna give it a real nice look. Now this thing is ready to go into the smoker. We've got our smoker heating up to 275. We're using a competition blend of pellets, which is hickory and some other woods. Gives it a really nice diverse flavor. You can't go wrong with that combination. Ideally, the bacon is going to cook on the outside to where it's crispy and the inside, the back strap, is going to come out to a nice medium. In my experience, it's pretty hard to get the back strap to medium rare and get the bacon done, so you kind of got to play with that. About two hours later, 
This thing looks amazing, it smells amazing, and it's ready to come off of the smoker and onto a dinner plate. It's got some really nice juices leaking off of it. The bacon looks really, really nice and crispy. I'm sure that back strap is a nice medium. Let's get these things off the smoker and into the house. All right, guys, this back strap just came out of the smoker. Smells amazing, looks amazing. I can absolutely not wait to dig into this. I smoked this at 275. I smoked it for a couple of hours. I wanted to smoke it on a heat that wasn't going to like overdo it, but also a heat that was high enough to, to get the bacon done. And I think 275 is the ticket for that. So I'm gonna take one of the slices out of the middle that's got a good bit of cream cheese from it and we're going to uh, give this a little bit of a taste test. So some of the cream cheese came out when you were slicing it. I think that's just uh, part of the process with these things, you know, something you're not gonna be able to get around, but we got us a good bit here. The meat, it's got a pretty good smoke ring on it. It's a little bit, I, I'd call it a medium. It's not a medium rare, but that's kind of hard to do uh, to get the bacon done and to get the, the back strap, you know, not overdone, so I think medium is about as good as you're gonna get on this, unless there's something I don't know, but that's that's about enough talking. We got a piece with uh, some bacon on it, we got some cream cheese on it, and we got a good bit of back strap on it. I put a whole jalapeno in here, so it should have a, have a decent amount of heat. Well, let's give this a try. Guys, that is some really, really good eating right there. Even though this is an older age class animal, if you take the time to age the meat a couple of days in a dry, cool environment, if you make sure that you trim all the fat and the silver skin off, and if you make sure that you don't overdo it, even bigger animals like bucks can taste really, really good, and this is just a great example of that. Cream cheese, bacon, jalapenos, you can't go wrong with that flavor-wise. The Kinder seasoning, is coming through and I can really taste that, which if you don't, if you haven't ever used that before, it's a really great all-purpose seasoning, good for steaks, barbecue, anything. I can really taste that in there and it's doing a good job. And yeah, I would probably rate this about a seven out of 10. Really, really good way to cook backstrap. Um, thoroughly enjoying eating this. Well guys, I'm getting pretty full, so that's gonna bring us to the end of this video. I really hope this video had something for you. I hope it was entertaining and more than anything, I hope that it's kind of inspired you be a little bit more creative with how you eat your back strap and if you're going to deviate from bread and frying it this is a really really good way to prepare it and something you can serve to your friends and family with confidence if you guys haven't seen the hunt where i harvested this deer i would highly encourage you to check it out and again i'm going to link that video in the description it's also going to show as this video closes along with another great catch clean cook video in that hunt it's a late october morning really really cold some pre-rut activity going on and I harvest a really, really nice buck. Be sure to check that out. You'll be super glad that you watched it. With that being said, guys, this is the end of the video. I want to thank you guys for watching a man versus deer video. I will catch you later, and good luck in the woods.